Hi everyone, welcome and welcome back to Dr. Han's classroom. So the FDA have just authorized the Pfizer and Moderna booster COVID-19 vaccine for every adult in the US and the CDC agrees with that. So basically the official message is that uh, every adult can get a booster COVID-19 dose if they have already received their uh, Johnson & Johnson or Janssen vaccines more than two months and more than six months months since their second dose of their mRNA vaccines. So what is the biggest argument behind booster for all adults? Well, let's find out. First, let's look at the COVID-19 cases from our world in data. Here are the new daily confirmed COVID-19 cases per million people from five major English-speaking countries. Now, in fact, more than 70% of my viewers are also from these five countries. Now, we clearly see that the UK, US, and Canada are trending upward in new cases. This may be due to the colder weather in the Northern Hemisphere. But the weather cannot be the only con contributing factor because we see Australia is trending down but at the same time New Zealand is trending up. It is very possible that the timing of the initial vaccination time and waning of immunity are contributing factors to the increase in new cases. A recent article published in the journal Science has looked at the COVID-19 vaccine effectiveness against infection and death by vaccine type in the Veterans Health Administration system in the U.S. The study pulled data from 780,225 VA users. Now, it covers about 2.7% of the U.S. population and most are male. The study looked at the period from February to October 2021. They found that all three brands of COVID-19 vaccines available in the U.S. showed a decline in effectiveness against infection. Now for Pfizer, it went down from 86.9% in March to 43.3% in September. Moderna went down from 89.2% to 58%. And most alarmingly, Johnson & Johnson or Janssen dropped from 86.4% effectiveness against infection to only 13.1% in September. This significant drop in effectiveness against infection is very, very alarming, especially for the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. Now, in terms of effectiveness against death, the study found the vaccine remains protective against death during the summer Delta surge. The study find out from July to October 2021, vaccine effectiveness against death for people less than 65 years old was 73% for Janssen, 81.5% for Moderna, and 84.3% for Pfizer. And for VA users 65 years old and above, the effectiveness against death for Janssen was 52.2%, Moderna 75.5%, and Pfizer 70.1%. Now, this study has some value, and it showed us that people who received a Johnson & Johnson vaccine would most likely be benefited from a booster dose. The best thing about this data is that it filled the gap or deficiency of knowledge regarding mild to moderate breakthrough cases at the national level because the CDC has stopped tracking all breakthrough cases at the national level since May 2021. They only tracked those hospitalized and death cases. But we need to be aware that this study is not without imitation. The biggest limitation of the study is that veterans are predominantly males and asymptomatic infection were not included in the analysis. The study also did not directly look at the effectiveness against hospitalization. Now, since the CDC is not tracking mild and moderate breakthrough cases, we could only go to local data. And here we are looking at the data from the New York State received through November 15th. So it's fairly recent. Now, they do seem to track all breakthrough cases. And according to their data, breakthrough cases for 12 years old and older is about 1.2%. 
But at the end of October, although vaccine effectiveness against infection has dropped from 91.8 percent to 79.4 percent in the state of New York, the effectiveness of preventing hospitalization remains high at about 90 to 95.5 percent. So when I go to CDC website trying to look for some publicly available data, unfortunately, CDC is not very up to date. And here we are looking at the data posted by the CDC on November 18th, which is two days before I make this video. But it only reflects hospitalization through September 25th. Now, which is almost a two-month delay in their reporting uh, to the public. Now, this data from uh, 13 states, and it was still not enough to generalize at the national level. Based on what I could find on the CDC website, and I know it is imperfect, perhaps it's also very outdated, this graph that I pointed with a red arrow shows that we are only seeing people over 65 years old who are vaccinated are gaining in hospitalization rate. But recently, Dr. Fauci claimed that what we are starting to see now is an uptick in hospitalization among people who've vaccinated but not boosted. Now, however, I was not able to find publicly available data to back up Dr. Fauci's claim when I was preparing this video. So if you can find that data, please leave me a comment and let me know, and I'm sure other viewers would like to know that as well. Now, let's say you are healthy and young, but you are also considering the booster dose for various reasons. Mm, what about myocarditis? Let's look at it. The CDC ACIP committee just met on Friday, November 19th. The VSAFE Active Safety Monitoring System has 725,917 booster dose reports. Now, they identified Moderna booster generally has more general vaccine side effects than the Pfizer booster, but both boosters have less frequent side effects than the primary series. The VSAFE system did not identify any myocarditis cases. In terms of the various data, there were 54 preliminary reports of myocarditis and myopericarditis all after mRNA vaccine, which was about 25.9 million doses of these boosters have been given already in the U.S. Now, 38 cases are still under review and 12 are confirmed. If we count all reported 54 cases, we have about 2.1 cases per million of mRNA COVID-19 vaccine. Now, since most people who have received the booster dose are older with an average age of 51 at this point, the number cannot be generalized to the younger population, particularly those who are less than 30 years old, which we know male less than 30 years old has the highest incidence of vaccine-related myocarditis. And the official CDC recommendation is that if you are young and healthy, you need to weigh your own benefits and risk when you are consider the booster dose. Now, technically, all adults in the U.S. are eligible for the booster dose, but about a week ago, the WHO chief called the distribution of booster COVID-19 vaccine a scandal that must stop now because much fewer people are receiving the primary dose on a global scale. Just something for us to think about before I wrap up this week's video. Now, while we are doing our best to protect ourselves and our loved ones, there are also many people who have much less resources in other parts of the world who also need help and protection. Now, that is all for this week. And I also have another video about booster dose and mixing and matching. And please feel free to check that out. And for those of us who are living here in the U.S., Thanksgiving is coming and I wish you a very happy Thanksgiving, safe travel and stay safe as always. And I will see you after Turkey Day next week. All right, take care and bye.